Blood pressure medications and their side effects are not to be taken lightly, particularly in older adults where the risk is greater. And you know we've been using these drugs, Vicki, for a long time, 50, 60, 70 years, something like that. And the problems that we see with it are not something that doctors pay much attention to because they're looking at the positive things, not the negative things that these drugs do. Well, the thiazide diuretics have been the drug of choice, decreasing the blood pressure by causing sodium and fluid loss, lowering the pressure with volume depletion. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be talking about the common adverse effects that can occur from the thiazides and why close laboratory monitoring is so important. Right. Well, it's, it's time to... Be, we need to change how we do some things in medicine, particularly when we're treating problems uh, that are the symptoms rather than the underlying cause. And that's what's happened when we're treating hypertension with thiazides. And they are the first line of treatment that's recommended by the American Medical Association and all the organizations that are involved with hypertension treatment. So what would be the names of a couple of the thiazides so well, people would... HCTZ is the most common one that's used. It's called hydrochlorothiazide. There's another one called Hygraton. They're, they're all in a family that do what you said they do. And all of them have problems that are just the opposite of what you'd think because you're trying to prevent these things from happening. And for example, the cholesterol is raised. Uh, the risk for gout goes up because it raises uric acid. And diabetes. It and increases your risk for getting diabetes. It causes metabolic problems beyond potassium, magnesium deficiency which can uh, really cause problems with increased angina and asthma and a lot of other things. And kidney injury. And you can have acute kidney injury. And, and as it turns out in these studies that were done at the University of California and through the University of Texas, uh, there is a, a lot of, of a problem just from the, from the three things they studied, which were low potassium, low sodium, and kidney injury. And the amount of kidney injury they're talking about is 25%. And that's just within a few months of taking the drug. That's so pretty big. It's big. It's no surprise that the electrolytes would go down because it's a diuretic. Well, it's causing the loss of a lot of sodium, and with it goes out potassium and magnesium. And if you lose enough uh, potassium and magnesium, you can no longer replace the potassium without replacing the magnesium because one is intimately involved with the other, so you have to do both of them, and a lot of people don't realize that. So if a person's um, sodium and potassium and magnesium go down too low, um, then if they supplement with that... You can supplement. Would that, but would that make your blood pressure go back up then? Well, I don't think it would make it go back up, no. It, 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 would, it would be at least preventing the side effects that we see. So we've got a drug that has, is seen in 14% of people who are elderly that are taking this. That's a huge number of people. So... And that developed just over nine months. So we're talking about things here that are huge in their frequency. And maybe the blood pressure could even cause some of the things that the side effects. Exactly. I mean, you're trying to prevent heart attacks and strokes, and here they are causing some of those symptoms. That uh, you're trying to prevent by it, taking the medication in the first place. Exactly. So The other thing that this article pointed out is that only 42% of patients who were started on these thiazide data, diuretics were getting follow-up blood tests to see what's the effect on the cholesterol and the uric acid and the blood sugar and the potassium and the magnesium. It's, and, and so, the kidneys. And, and the kidney failure. That's right. So maybe it's a good idea to ask your doctor to do this lab work because many of the doctors aren't doing it. Maybe it's an even better idea to treat hypertension and its cause. So what we can do is, is lifestyle. Yeah, live a healthy lifestyle. Right, exercise, eat the right food, reduce your stress. stress, get enough sleep. Yeah, all those things are very important in reducing the effects of hypertension. So when we're talking about managing hypertension, any treatment that we do, any drug that we use in the mainstream has serious potential complications, and they're not as infrequent as you think. So. If you've got hypertension, you better be thinking about what can I do to take responsibility to treat my hypertension myself?